rated at a dampening factor of 4,000, that is a pretty big claim. So today we're really going to put it to the test and see how that works in the real world. Welcome to hi -Fied. I'm Marcos, this is Kurt, and today we're having a look at a fan favorite, Hegel H390. The H390 is priced at $7,900 Canadian, around $6,000 USD. The 390 is Hegel's second largest integrated amplifier, rated at 2 times 250 watts into 8 ohms, featuring a full dual mono construction. Like Kurt said, it's got a damping factor rated at 4,000. In terms of analog inputs, you have a single balanced input and two RCA inputs. On the digital side, you have a multitude of coax, optical, USB, and also a network connection. In terms of connectivity, the Hegel 390 is a little bit stripped back, but it's featuring its Rune Ready, AirPlay and Spotify Connect compatible, and also features UPnP streaming. I would say one of the technologies that Hegel has and its claim is its really high dampening factor. So what is dampening factor? I don't want to get too technical. However, it's basically the ability to really push a speaker in and pull it back in. And we're really going to test this during in this video just to see some of these claims. But the whole idea, it just gives it's allegedly and supposedly the whole idea that gives you a lot more control on your bass. Now how Hegel achieves this, which again, to keep it really simple, they use what's called the feed forward. I don't want to complicate things, but it's something that a lot of manufacturers don't you don't do. And from what I know, it's actually a patent design that they developed. One really impressive feature with the Hegel is its DAC that's built in. It's a really, really good DAC featuring MQA unfolding, DSD playback, and up to 32-bit playback as well. This is a huge bonus because it's not something you typically see in an integrated amplifier, such a high quality DAC. The other thing that's really cool that Hegel does as well to make sure that the DAC gets the best information as possible, they do a lot of signal processing. The DAC is also a bit perfect DAC. So what I find really neat when talking to the guys at Hegel is the way they do their airplay. Because usually during airplay, one of the one of the most critiques I would say people have with it is that you're using the the volume control on the phone itself. In the Hegel, you're not. The Hegel actually bypasses the airplay volume functions. And when you press that button, it actually it's Hegel that's controlling the volume and not the phone itself therefore preserving signal quality. So at first glance, the 390 is not too, too much to look at, but when you have a closer look to at it, you can really tell there's some really quality finishing going on here. So the whole front is a machined aluminum faceplate. The volume and source control knobs are aluminum as well. And it's just got a really simple look to it that's just bare bones, but just j does the job really well. One thing I can really appreciate is just as clean, minimal looks, which is known for Scandinavian design. Also, I like how they improved the, the actual display. Uh, it's just a much, uh, the picture a lot closer together than the older ones where it's just an old school, kind of like LCD display on there. And one thing that would just, guys there at Hegel, if there's any way, this logo. I think this logo just stands out too much. Maybe if it was just etched and without adding any color white to it, I think it would just really clean up the look. When it comes to setting up the H390, it's pretty plug and play. This is much more similar to a uh, old school power amp or analog power amp. You just plug in your, your main power cable, your speaker cables, and then whatever source you're gonna be using, you can just plug them in and select it with the source volume knob or the remote control. One thing to note though, when it comes to streaming and a streaming playback, the Hegel does not feature any Wi-Fi connectivity. So you always need to be hardwired if you're gonna be using its streaming capabilities. So one thing I do wish it had in terms of the setup is its own app, which I think would have been a really nice touch. However, it does have 
AirPlay on there, so it's really easy. You know, you just go on your phone and and you just connect to the device. How you connect to any other AirPlay device? If you do want to use an app, you'd have to use a third-party software. Anything that's a UPnP um, device, you can download something similar we see in the old Logitech software or anything that's out there. We'll be able to control on this unit. One thing though, if you're willing to pay for the license of it, it, it is Ruin Ready, which I think is some of the best software out there. So I would highly recommend it when considering purchase this unit. When it came to performing our classic DB test with the H390 at really low volume levels, around 55 to 60 decibels, the 390 performed incredibly well. I found the range was real, like the frequency range was very apparent. You could definitely define the bass, you could definitely, definitely define the higher notes. But if you're looking for a more clinical amp, the 390 is a little bit more well or rounded on the edges. You're not gonna get that clinical detail at the lower volume levels. So when it came to the high volume listening test, we really pushed it and we were able to go easily over 90 dBs. However though, because this thing just got so much raw power and again that dampening factor, we really didn't want to, we didn't really want to damage the speaker. So it easily, we could easily have gone more. We just didn't want to push it. And this was really apparent for one of the first times what we did is we took a full frequency um, track on there and we, we wanted to push this. And we, and as you can see in some of the takes in the videos, you, it's surprising like how much control it has over that driver with almost no distortion at all. When it came to listening to the H390, it was a great listen. Kurt and I really enjoyed it. Two songs that really stood out for, for us today was Daryl Anger and the Barbara Higby Quartet. And the song was called Egypt, and it's a live show. With the Hegel H390, I found it was really captivating to listen to. It sounded really live. Everything was so well controlled. And I just thought it really got me diving really deep into all the different instrumentation that's going on in this song. So when it comes to recording like this, especially a live recording that is that is pretty much mic far away, and what that means is they're not taking the microphones and putting it too close to the to the instruments. A lot of times, stuff like this can sound a little bit thin. And one thing that I do notice in the Hegel compared to a lot of amplifiers out there and very similar to some tube I don't want to say like tube like but what it does it creates a, a little bit more I would say sound a little bit more holographic where there's a little bit more heft and body into the instruments alone so it doesn't sound too thin and this was really apparent in the steel drums because steel drums because they can't hit it one thing too hard or it sounds too shrill if they're really banging away on it generally on live recording it can sound just way too thin <laughs> this on this amp was still able to bring you know, a little bit more life into an instrument like that. The second song we listened to was by Govinda and the song is called Golden Bow. And if you really want to listen to a song that just hits you hard and fast, this is the song to listen to. The reason why we want to hear it on the Hegel is exactly for that. We want to really test that damping factor, listen to that control in the bass, and the Hegel had no problem with that. And it, I really thought in this song, it really hit you in the chest, even using our small PMC speakers. What you will notice in the song, it's pretty interesting how they mixed it. One thing is they have a lot of synthesized instruments on there, for example, like the harp. So before the bass kicks in, there's, there's this part where they take the harp and they, they spread it across the whole pane of the, basically of the soundstage. So you should be able to really hear it all across from one speaker to the other, where it's just, it's almost like the harp is just filling that space. After that plays, there's the, the first bass note kicks in. And when that bass kicks in, it's it, it kicks in hard, like you said. It kind of hits you in the chest. And it was able on this, on this speaker, I can't believe how much bass this can actually really produce. Um, and it shows you with an amplifier like this, you know really how much you can maximize its control and on this track we pushed it to the limits that we usually never would even do because because we know that it was capable of it 
when it comes to comparing the H390, we've been reading our comments section and we saw all your comments. How's the 390 compared to the Super Nate? How's the 190 compared to the Super Nate? Follow closely because that video is coming very shortly. If you haven't seen our name Super Nate 3 video, go ahead and check it out. One thing I wish we did have here this comparison is the M33. Maybe we'll just have to try to make it happen. However, we don't have it here at the moment. And because with the M33, I think that's a really good direct competitor of this one. What you'll really find just to keep it simple, feature wise, the M33 is gonna have more features having its own apps. When it comes to sound, the two are gonna be quite different. The other one's a lot more, I would say, accurate, linear sounding, because of its normally because of its class D nature. On the Hegel, we'll just, you know, it's gonna have that more traditional, but just really feeling of this control and body to the music. And hopefully, instead of just trying to describe it briefly here, maybe we'll be able to do some kind of comparison, maybe with all three in the future. Let's let's see what happens. The H390 is well suited for many different setups, but with its large power handling and its amount of control, it can drive a much larger room than you may think. When it comes down to who the H390 is for, it's really for so many different people, but if you really like cranking it up and really feeling the music, that's who I think the H390 really suits the most. The amazing part about the H390 is the level of refinement that it retains. That way you can still play classical. You can still play all kinds of refined, more refined recordings with an ease. So for, for those of you that are that have want or have a difficult speaker, like the Maggie's or Magical, or there's, there's a lot of them, you got Totem Manny's that are very difficult to drive, rest assured this will drive it. And one thing when it comes to picking out your speaker, I would say, because the Hegel, I wouldn't say is the most analytical out there, but if you want to have that feeling of extracting detail, if you're that type of person, you know, pick a speaker that's, for example, like a Focal, a Bowers, uh, certain Kef models uh, to, to as well. Those kind of speakers with that kind of sound signature will feel that it's, a, will kind of have that feeling of opening up in terms of detail. And it's not that, the Hegel is detailed is not detailed it's just that it's a, I would say a more rounded sound so when you match that with like a lot of European speakers like Spendor um, like for example or even some of these vintage uh, creations like like the Linton or the the KLH if you want if you want that thing of that more warmer sound I would say match it with one of those speakers but the good thing is be confident that this amplifier will, will really, you're going to be able to find a speaker that you'll be able to drive as we know and you and you really can choose the speaker that you want. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.